Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Q. Now we have talked about linked list, we have talked about stack and now it's time for Q. Now Q is almost same as stack. The difference would be in stack we use a concept of LIFO which is last in first out and in Q we use a concept of FIFO which is first in first out. Which means whichever element arrived first will be the first one to go out. So it is first in first out. Now in real world whenever you want to take a movie ticket you join a queue right. So whoever arrived first will get the first ticket. In a queue what we do is we have let's say we can implement this with a, with a different concept. We will be implementing this with an array. Uh, so you can do that with the help of array or you can do that with the help of linked list. In this example we'll look at how do we implement that with the help of array. In fact in array itself we can go with the flat array or we can go with the circular array. But we'll see the difference. Now let's have the array of size 4 where you can have 4 elements. In this array you will be having 2 end. The end from where you will insert the value and the end from where you will take out the value. So this is your insert. So this is where you will insert the element and this is where you will take out the element. And that's why whichever element reaches first in the queue will be the first one to go out. Now let's say if I insert a value 5. So the 5 will be coming from here. It will go in this area. So the 5 will be saved here. The moment you insert a new value, let's say 2, it will go here. Let's say if I insert 7, it will go here. And let's say if I insert 3, it will go here. So this is how you add the elements. Now if you want to delete the element, so this is the first element which, which go out. So 5 is the first element which go out. And then all this element which is 2, 7 and 3, they will shift on left hand side. So 2 will come here, 7 will go on the place of 2 and 3 will go on the place of 7. And then you can add one more element at the end. That's what we are expecting from Q. So in Q basically we have two end. One is from where you will insert the value and from where you can take out the value. So you can call this, this area or this thing called as front. And this is the rear end where from where you are inserting the value. Now in Q we can perform certain operations. So you can insert the values and you can remove the values. The way we did with stack. We, in stack we use a concept of pop or push. So push would be inserting values in the same way in Q we use a different term. So that term is NQ. So NQ is like inserting or in stack you can say push. If you want to remove the element, we use a word called as DQ. So we have a concept of NQ. So you, you, you can represent insertion with the help of NQ and you can remove the element with the help of DQ. Now of course NQ will take an element from you. So you have to pass a data and then in DQ you don't pass the value but it will return your value. So let's say if you say DQ and your front is 5 so it will give you 5 but let's say after after that also you are saying dq it will give you 2 now with these two methods we can implement some more methods as well example we can implement a method of size which will give you the size of the queue uh, we can implement is empty if to check if it is empty these are two methods we can also implement in this we can also implement peak the way we did in uh, stack you can get the value which is going to be removed it will not remove the value but it will it will show you which is the value which which is going to remove now how do we implement this so first step would be we need to create a array so we have to create an array of i will go for an array of size 5 i love this number 5 so i will go for the array of size 5 and then i will try to add the element now how many variables we need here so basically when you talk about this implementation, maybe we need a front variable which will have the index number of the front. Because every time, so initially when you don't have the value in this in the queue. So example if I create the, another queue here and if I say the queue is of size 5. So we have a size of 5. So whenever you don't have any element, of course the front and rear both will be not be referring here. But then the moment you add a value, front and rear both will refer to this value. So this is your front and this is your rear. But the moment you add more values let's say if you have entered 5 and then 2 the rear will be pointing at this point in fact the rear we have to shift to this point when you insert 2 so that you can add 3 so rear will shift here so every time you add a value you will say rear plus plus and every time you delete the value you have to say front plus plus so when you say delete you have to say front plus plus and whenever you insert you will say rear plus we'll see the implementation and then you will understand what i'm talking about so I will go back here in the queue and so you can see I have two classes one we have is runner class another we have is a queue class. I will go to queue and let's try to implement those methods. The first method we have to implement is nq. Oh before that we need to create some certain variables. The first thing would be I want to create a queue itself. So I would say queue 
And the size of this queue would be, let's say, uh, five initially, or this is not what you do it. So you say new int and you specify the size five. You can make it dynamic, your choice, but initially I will go with the static one or fixed one so that it will be easier for you to understand. And then we need three variables. We'll say size, one of the variable. Uh, then I need a variable which is front, which will refer to the front element. And then I will need a rear element, which will, or rear variable, which will refer to the rear element. Once you got these four variables, and of course the value for this size would be zero, front would be zero, rear will be zero. And then I will create the method. So the method name is public void and queue. This is my method, which will take a uh, int data, and then I will try to insert a value here. Now, how do we add the data into a uh, NQ? So for that, I will go back to my this point and let me just make this an empty empty queue. Okay, so you, you can see that we got a uh, empty queue here. So the name of this queue is queue itself. And now I want to insert a value. So let's say if I'm inserting a value, which is five. So in this queue, at the index value zero, I want to insert five. Now, if you want to insert the value, we use a variable which is real. And by default, real has the value which is zero. In fact, front will be also referring to the first element as of, at this point. So we'll say front is also zero, index number zero, index number one, index number two, three, and four. Now, front and rear both will refer to the same element here at the end. Now, the moment you add five, so at the rear point, you have to insert five. Now, how do we achieve that? So in the code itself, you will say Q of rear is equal to whatever data you are passing. So the data I'm passing is data itself. Now, once you have added the value, you need to do one thing. After adding the value five, you just need to shift your rear to the next location, which is here. And how do we do that? How do we shift our rear? It's very easy. You simply say rear plus plus. So you will say rear is equal to rear plus one. Or you can say plus plus, that's fine. And then once you have added the value, or incremented the value. Now I also want to increase the size of it, right? So now the size is size plus plus because we are not, in fact, we can write size equal to size plus one just to maintain the same sequence. So if you have real equal to real plus one and size equal to size plus one, so every time you add the value, the size will increment. It's that simple. Time and let's work with NQ and then later we'll work with DQ. I want to see the element as well. So let me say I want to create a show method which will print the elements. So we, we also need one more method here which is show. So I would say show method as well. And show is responsible to print all the elements. And in this show, if I want to print elements, it will print all the elements in the, from the queue. Uh, but how do we do that? So what I will do is I will say for loop, I will start with zero initially. And then I would say, okay, till what point we have to go? I have to, I have to go till size, right? And then plus plus because the size of the array may be, so you have inserted three values. So the size would be three. So you have to go till I less than three. And every time you go there, you just need to print the elements. And the way you can print the element is by saying the value Q of I, and then you will also print a space after that. And here I want to print the elements. I would say system.out.println, I would say elements, elements, colon, so that you know you, it will give you a good format of printing. I don't want to uh, print it in there. That's it, it will work now. So we got NQ, we got show. Now how do we verify? So let's go to runner. And in this runner, let me create object of Q. I will say Q, Q is equal to new Q. I got the object which is Q. And in this Q, I will add the element, I would say, uh, NQ, I want to NQ the first element, which is let's say five, as we have done here. Now, after inserting five, I will just simply say Q dot show. I want to see how many elements are there. And if you run this code, you can see we got five. We got only one element. That's perfect. Let me just add one more element here. And that will be two in this case. I would say two here. And when you say two, if I run this code, you can see we got five and two. So every time you insert the value, it will, it will get added in the queue. But question arises, how will you remove the element? And what happens when you go beyond the size? Let's say if I inserted uh, seven values, what will happen? And of course, if you insert seven values or six values, it will give you a very famous error or the exception, which is array index out of bound exception. Now, how do we handle that? That we'll see in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section.